People are asking, is it worth getting involved in this process? Will the council listen? Does the council care? I would say yes, the council does listen. I know the council listens. I listen and my colleagues do. But it's about what we can do, what we can actually deliver. We talked to people in the spring and you know, quite a few people turned up and let us know what they felt. We went away, we worked over the, the summer and into the autumn, and I think we've got a budget here that reflects what people really, really feel that they want to keep. It acknowledges there are some things that we can't do, but it does keep those things that seem to be cherished by people. We are protecting the civil, uh, civic theatre, so we are protecting uh, the Dolphin Centre, but tragically it means that we have no money for Head of Steam and, and for Cockett and Library and, and other things. But we do listen. It is important. If you can't make these sessions in person, then use email, use snail mail, write to me, telephone one of your local councillors, everybody's got a local councillor. Let us know your views because this budget really is a budget for the whole of Darlington. Whether you correspond with us or not, the budget will affect you, so you might as well have your say. Darlington Borough Council has got difficult decisions to make about its budget because it draws a certain amount of finance from the, re from the uh, uh, residents through the taxes and things, um, but a sizeable amount of money we get comes directly from government. The government have decided, for whatever reason, to cut that quite substantially, down from 30 odd million uh, at the beginning of this process to what we suspect will be about 3 million at the end of it. That's a sizeable financial challenge this council's got to, uh, to meet, but meet it we will but it's not going to be easy. It's a massive ask, but it's an ask that this council uh, will deliver. Darling Borough Council for a long time has been one of the most efficient councils, not just regionally, but nationally. We've got the second lowest council tax. All of our inspection regimes over the last four or five years have clearly pointed out that where we can, we've always been very lean. Um, for that reason, it's very difficult to get even more out of the system. We've already shed between four and 500 posts over the, uh, the last two years. We've had a pay freeze for, for four years. Some of our staff for longer than that, senior staff, had no pay rise for five years. Um, but we need to, to find more. But in a business where 80% of your expenditure goes on staff, for every pound that we cut, 80 pence is going to be, have to be found through redundancies. And that will impact on how the public uh, are served by the authority. For the last two years we've had to implement very challenging um, budgets as, as people will be aware. Uh, I'm conscious that the people of the town have had to see the, the ending of the Arts Centre and other cuts. So we've been implementing cuts as we've gone but we've also been trying to, to try and get ahead of the curve to try and put together a, a kind of war chest as you were so that we can help those organisations to fend for themselves in the future and the council is not going to be in a position to do that. So we prepared for uh, the absolute worst case scenario uh, and even now we continue to, to do that. We will use the vast majority of the balances that we've collected together over the last couple of years to help organisations such as Head of Steam, such as Cockett and Library and, and other places to stand on their own two feet. But when this money's gone, it's gone. In addition to the, to the cuts we've made, the redundancies that we've declared, etc., we've also looked to see whether we can raise more money. The government have made it plain that we can't raise more than 2% in, uh, in taxes, and to be honest, yeah, I feel 2% is probably about as much as hard-working families can afford at present. If we had the same council tax as Sir Gates said, we would have an extra £6 million to spend, which would virtually wipe out half of the cuts that we need to make this year. So. We're looking to, to raise income where we can. It's difficult in a, at times like this to, to actually get that extra income. And I'd like to say thank you to the people who use the Civic Theatre, who obviously love the theatre and have happily paid an extra pound per ticket. That money will go on refurbishing the Civic Theatre. And across the, the piece, wherever we can, we've raised charges and we will raise charges. But we have to be mindful that if we overprice the Dolphin Centre, people will simply stop using it.
and then we'll lose it all together. So it's a very tricky ask to, uh, to look for extra money. Balancing the budget isn't just about making cuts. Uh, where we can, we try and get extra income. Now, regrettably, some of that comes through high taxes and uh, we will have to have a 2% increase in council tax this year. But we're also looking to uh, to build more new homes because for every new home we get, we build, we actually get a bonus from, from the government of around £3,000. So residents will see the council pushing ahead with building new homes. Homes that we need, admittedly, but homes that are financially very, very advantageous to, to the council. We're also looking to increase uh, the number of businesses in town. That again is a double whammy in terms of it gets jobs for, for residents, which you know, we need at present, but also it brings in vital uh, revenue to, to the authority. Our largest single uh, rate payer uh, is, is a company who pays us over a million pounds a year in rates. If we can attract two or three of those over the next two years, then that's another three million pounds into the budget. So Darlingborough Council is trying where we can to trade our way, uh, if not out of this problem, then at least to a position of stability. Despite what some people say, there, there is no alternative. We have to stick to this budget. It's challenging, it's difficult, but given that it's the government that has took money away from us, not us sending them money, there's no way that we can just continue pretending that we've got money we haven't. It will be immoral for, for us to tell people, yes, you know, come to work, we'll pay you, when we know we've only got enough money to pay them for part of the year. It would be immoral to tell the elderly and the vulnerable that we will provide you services throughout the year at the current level if we know we can't do that because we haven't got the money. I didn't become leader to make these cuts, but equally I didn't become leader to kid people into believing that there is an alternative. We need to look also at individual responsibility. Um, 30 odd years in local government and I still haven't found the department responsible for littering the town. I've found the department that picks it up, but I still can't find the department that drops it. I'm forced to conclude the public are doing it. £1.3 million pounds worth of litter is dropped in this town every year. If we could just half that, that's about three quarters of a million pound that we would save. Now, that's not a difficult ask. It just means don't drop litter. We'll also be asking people to do other things around Cockett and Library, Head of Steam. We'll be asking them to step up to the plate in the same way that Darlington for Culture did. One of our biggest and most significant partners is the, the NHS. They are uh, after us probably the, in fact they may now be, the biggest single employer uh, in town. The council was, but I think the NHS probably are now. So we need to work with them. They face financial challenges as well. And there are things that we can do differently together which will result in either both organisations making a saving or even service improvements to the public. So. The challenge is there, we've got good partnership relationships with the NHS, the opportunity there uh, is for us to, to make the most of them. Despite everything that we've talked about so far, Darlington has a, a brilliant future. Uh, it's a great town to, to live in, it's a great town to go to school in, our education results are fantastic, our young people are brilliant and our employers are world class. So we've got everything going for us, we've got everything in the mix that we need. Um, what we need now is just to keep pushing forward. We've got the Department for Education building outside the town hall, that's a first nationally to actually lock public sector jobs together in that kind of a, uh, of a hub. I met with the Barring and Vetting Agency just last week and they're more than happy to, to be here. They're rooted in town. We've got the new cinema development starting early in the new year. You know, things just keep getting better in this town. But we've got a short-term problem with the council's budget. But we will resolve that. And this town does have a brilliant future.